Chains were such a symbol of strength that in the early 1900s, magician Harry Houdini made an entire career out of breaking out of them. And chains spurred industrial progress and helped propel the engine that got the Wright brothers off the ground in 1903. More infamously, chains had been used for punishment. And throughout history, they've kept prisoners from escaping. A peerless chain, churning out as many links as they do, means feeding the plant's insatiable appetite for raw steel. This is where all of our raw material comes in. Each one of these coils, and it doesn't matter what size the material is, weigh approximately 4,000 pounds. And in any given day of production, we will go through 40 coils. The raw coils arrive from the steel mills with some scale on their surface, so they must be cleaned and prepped before their transformation begins. A 20-minute soak in 5,000 gallons of sulfuric acid usually does the trick. Once the acid is washed away, the coil is dunked again in a lime bath to smooth the surface. The supersized coil is then whisked away to the wire draw department. There, the coils, resembling giant slinkies, are ready to be cut down to size. We're taking those coils that we cleaned and prepped, and we're drawing the wire down to a very specific diameter. The huge rod is uncoiled and fed into a machine that narrows it down with a smooth, shiny finish. Then, it's time to make some change. Right now, we're in the forming and welding department, which is really the heart and soul of the chain making process. This is where we take that rod that we prep, cleaned, and drawn, and we form it and weld it into chain. Here, the wire is cut into slugs that are squeezed shut into the right diameter for the customer's needs. In the late 70s and early 80s, when video games came out, people became so creative, they would go and drill holes through their quarters, tie a little bit of fishing line in there, put it in until it hit the micro switch, pull it back out, get their quarter, get a free game. 